modifications. And uh, with SESTA now being signed into law, uh, the, the tools are vanishing faster than we can almost keep up with reporting on them. Hey everybody, I'm Susie Q, and I'm here to talk to you about how to deal with the media. What to do when the press comes calling, and what are you gonna say? What if you say the wrong thing? What if you're misquoted and it goes viral and everything's destroyed? Don't worry, don't worry, I'm gonna help you out. I now teach media training courses via Snapchat. So I've been doing this privately for some time, um, but working with somebody one-on-one -on -one, while amazing can only reach so many people. There's only one of me. Um, so now through the magic of Snapchat, I can come directly to you and teach you all of my tips and tricks for how to navigate the very turbulent waters of mainstream media and come out on top. Why on earth should you listen to me? <laughs> I have been um, in a number of mainstream publications, New York Times, uh, Vice, BuzzFeed, Daily Dot, the Daily Beast. I wrote the San Francisco Weekly for a number of years. I now write for Rolling Stone. I've been featured in Wired. I've written for Wired. Um, uh, what else? Ravishly. Uh, there's there's a lot. <laughs> so um, and. I feel pretty good about all of the press that I've done. It has been in line with what I want to communicate to the world and has been overall positive. Um, so in my media training courses, we deal with what happens and how to make sure that you come out on top when you deal with the media, that you're not misquoted, that you're not exploited, that you're not misrepresented. I'm gonna teach you some tools for how to ensure that you have a positive experience when the press comes calling. So I started doing media independently in 2012. I saw that uh, I saw that sex workers didn't get a fair shake in the media and um, I, I was escorting and stripping at the time and I wanted to change that. So I started a podcast called The Forecast. Um, it's all about showcasing and uplifting the stories, art, and voices of American sex workers. Um, about a year later, I got a phone call uh, via my work phone <laughs> from the number in my escorting ad. And it was Lori Siegel from CNN. And I panicked and I wanted to throw my phone out the window because I thought that somehow that could mean that the FBI was after me and the jig was up and it was all over. Um, but something made me stay on the phone. I'm so glad I did because um, in just a few weeks, uh, CNN was in my house with cameras uh, filming me doing a podcast <laughs> and um, they were doing a story on sex work in Silicon Valley, um, but I was able to insert uh, my project that I wanted traction for into that story and I wouldn't say it went viral, but it definitely went out there and I did a couple more stories with Lori and Erica and that went on to other things and um, you know that's what's turned into my media strategy career today and I want to teach you that stuff uh, because times are crazy right now we are at war essentially um, you know I think if you're a person who's, who's marginalized or cares about the future we're fighting right now. Um, so I want everyone who is like-minded, who believes in freedom and human rights to be as prepared as possible to go into battle in the press and um, convey what needs to be conveyed in order to form a more perfect union and a brighter future for this country. That's what I want. So right now, whether you take my media training course or not, which you definitely should. Link in the bio, class starts tomorrow. However, I'm gonna give you three tips right now that you can use should the media come calling. Here we go. <clears throat> Number one, it seems obvious, but like you'd really be surprised how often people forget to do this. Research journalists. 
If someone contacts you and says, hey, I'm Salsa from the New York Times, I'd love to interview you. A, make sure they're even actually from the New York Times. Is their email at Gmail or is it at New York Times? Do a Google search on them. What else have they written? Have they covered your industry before? Have they covered similar stories? How, was it positive? Was it negative? What's their social media? What kind of stuff are they retweeting? Uh, what stuff have they tweeted? Who do they follow? This is all information that will help you better navigate the situation. Number two, number two. Don't be afraid to set boundaries about an interview that you consent to do, right? Um, so I find I'm definitely anxious talking on the phone. I don't want to hop on the phone with a stranger and talk about my life, especially the parts of my life that might be criminalized in America right now. Thank you. No. Um, even to this day, even though I'm very comfortable, I've done live TV and I've done live radio and such, I will definitely ask for questions in advance and only consent to um, a written interview. So they'll send me questions, I'll email them back, that way I know exactly what I said, exactly what punctuation I used, and unless they really chop it up, I'm not gonna get misquoted. And for particularly sensitive issues, I always try to do that. So don't be afraid to do that. You don't have to do an on-camera interview. You don't have to hop on the phone. You can do whatever you feel comfortable with because you're the source, not them. <laughs> All right, number three, be helpful, right? It sounds simple, but um, when you are a source, also be a resource, and this accomplishes two things. This means that you are also helping to drive the narrative moving forward. So if they interview you and you say, hey, who else have you reached out to? Oh, you're looking for somebody who's a dominatrix? I happen to know a dominatrix. Would you mind, you know, would you like their info? Provided you have permission to do that, you know, ask consent always around before you, you know, put your poor dominatrix friend in touch with a reporter who may or may not be from the New York Times. Um, so, but that also accomplishes that the next time this journalist is, is doing a story, they may reach out to you, even if you're, it may not be particularly uh, pertaining to you. If you were helpful and got them a whole variety of sources, maybe you put them in touch with an organization that was very helpful, so maybe in line with what you wanted to convey. If you're helpful, the press will keep calling and that'll give you more opportunities in the future. So those are my three free tips just for you, uh, but I would love to have you at my Snapchat media training courses so I can answer all your questions, we can do live Q&A, and I can dive deeper into all of the things that I've learned um, over the past several years doing media as a sex worker. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope you enjoy what's in my channel. Please subscribe. Check out my podcast, The Forecast, and also Ill Repute, uh, stories of women who live wildly. They're both on iTunes, SoundCloud, all the places you get that stuff. And until next time, I guess, this is Susie Q. Signing off.